I'd like to come in here at this point, and when you said about the evidence of the controlling aspects, I'm sorry about before, um, but I'd like to carry on and say that the controlling aspects were the things telling me that um, he was in control and that he would still be there in 10 years' time. I could tell him anything, and I had told him things that I hadn't told anybody. For example, my, I read him my mum's poem, which I hadn't pulled out of the box for 13 years and getting me to do things that were out of my reach, but telling me it was for my own good because God had sent him to do this to breach me out of who I am, but sending me messages stating that things are going to happen um, and kind of setting them up. And then when they would happen, I would then go back to him, oh my gosh, you, you were right. And, but then looking back and looking back through things that were sent, um, pictures with little things in the pictures and asking me can I see it and I say to him well I can't see what you're trying to show me and getting me very confused with well, what he's trying to show that's me and gaslighting isn't it it put him that's gaslighting isn't it well well if what he was doing in the sense is that I didn't know who I was when the year before I'd, I'd learned to start putting my feet in the ground from 2013 when I took my childhood abuse back to court uh, back to the police and we went back to the courts and so then I felt much stronger within myself that everything that I'd done, everything that I suggested, anybody that I was speaking to, I shouldn't have been speaking to them. Everything that I was saying was wrong. Everything that I was trying to explain, I shouldn't speak because it was Katie, 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 but you need to listen. Um, phone calls for four hours at a time saying, well, I don't know, um, um, I don't know. And it was just a no conversation, but it was energy draining. So every time I would come off the phone, I felt so drained and I was... My, the stress levels were going up. Um, for example, there was incidents when he came into my home trying to trigger me. Um, he'd been there till 5 o'clock in the morning, and I wanted him to go, go home, really. And then he went off to see somebody that lives in my area and came back around 11 o'clock. Now, I hadn't gone to sleep. I'd got up. Still, I had my child, um, so I stayed awake. But around just before he came, I decided to lay down and just have an hour's sleep. Um, because I wasn't well as well, I'd not long had an operation. And he w he came and knocked on the door, and he's standing there in the doorway. Um, I've put the blanket over my head thinking, my gosh, he wants to start again, in the sense of carrying on again. I was so exhausted with the amount of harassment it felt like, that he was turning up at my house unannounced. And so I'm laying there, and I said to him, look, you're more than welcome to sit on your laptop. I just need an hour, I understand, like, we need to get this email in. And he was making the big issue about getting this email in, which I wasn't very concerned about. And he was saying things that um, I'm not paying him. And I said, well, I've not asked you to help for it. You've decided to do it as an advocate. Um, and I, you're stressing me out about something when I should be focusing on my court case with my housing. So on those things, I just got up kind of huffy and I was like, I can see what he's doing. He doesn't want me to lay down. I feel very uncomfortable. So I decided to get up and go into my kitchen. And I went into my kitchen, I made a coffee, I sat down on my chair, um, and he came into the kitchen at the end of it and sat down, and then he just carried on getting argumentative. And I just turned around to him and I said, look, Julian, I'm not doing this with you. I think it's best that you go off and maybe give me a call later, but he wouldn't leave my house. And he kept sitting there, carried on arguing. Sean, by the, I said, look, I'm not going to rise to you. My son is here. I'm not happy with you continuing this conversation in my home. He said, but you need to listen to this. I'm sent here because God sent me here. And if I don't do this, I'm pushing you through to do what you're supposed to be doing. I said, look, what you're actually doing is making me, um, you're making me stressed out. You're, 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 you're really, really confusing me on a lot of what is going on. Um, and all of reference to JC, that he was JC, he was Jesus Christ, and he was sent here, he's the son of God, the seven, and what I'm saying is in that point in the kitchen, he actually, because I was in the corner of my kitchen worktop sitting on the chair, um, it come to about to the point where he's lunged towards me, and what he's trying to do in between that is actually get me to get up and attack him. And I'm, I'm saying to him, why are you trying to do this? At the same time, I'm under investigation with the cardiology for my heart because my lungs collapsed last year. So Sean was there at the time, and he says, I need you to do this and come out of your shell. And Sean's saying to him, why are you trying to do this to her? You're, you're trying to put her back into hospital or something. I'm sorry that I did it, but I need, it, I need to make sure that she understands why I'm doing it. No, what you're doing is trying to kill me off. And that was what was, was concerning me. So he was aware